the series starts in a countryside, focusing on a house with broken walls and shattered windows. A group of henchmen is walking toward the house through a wheat field. Nearby, a sniper adjusts his gun inside a van. He points at the house and shoots at the broken door, but his bullet just misses a young girl inside, who leaps back to her hiding spot and holds her head in fear. The bullet hits a family picture on the wall and breaks its glass. An injured woman sits on the other side of the room while a guy is unconscious on the floor. The girl, Jian, spots a gun on the floor and wants to reach it, but the sniper's shot makes it slide under the couch, the gun keeps firing in the distance. Jian startles and backs away, she closes her eyes and tells herself to focus, a flashback shows Jian and her uncle Jean Man watching an action movie. When Jian ridicules how the main character conveniently misses all the bullets, Jean Man says, humans always have their blind spots, and the protagonist is using the correct blind spots to navigate his way, returning from her flashback, Jian has an idea. She ties a mirror to a broom and uses it to check the sniper's position and his blind spot. The unconscious guy also gets up, and the woman nervously observes what Jian is doing. After a few tries, she figures out the blind spot is on the top of the door. She jumps on top of a fridge and gets ready to jump behind a sofa. The sniper shoots at her but misses. Jian lands under the couch and tries to reach the handgun underneath, but when she lifts up the sofa, the girl finds something even better, a large gun hidden inside. Now, it's the sniper's turn to run. The scene shifts back to the past when Jian is at a police station where a man claims she beat him up. From the CCTV footage, the police find that the man went after a woman into a female bathroom, and Jian kicked him out and beat him up for doing so. Jian wants to leave, but the police say that even though what the pervert did is wrong, she can't handle him like that. Jian calls her uncle to come get her, but a policeman picks up the phone instead and informs her that her uncle is dead, Jian is too stunned to speak. She then appears to be in a car driven back to her uncle's house. In the car, Jian thinks about the time when Jean Man was installing security bars on Jian's window in her new apartment in Seoul. He also got her a metal closet that is bulletproof, even though she thinks it's too much as she doesn't have any money and it makes her place look ugly. Jean Man explains that she will be safe hiding inside the closet if there is a rain of bullets, making Jian laugh out loud. Jian then tells him about a store owner who didn't pay her enough for her part time work and was later found in a car accident with all of his bones broken, having to stay in the hospital for six months. After that incident, he agreed to pay her and his other victims back. Jean Man says he was the one who did that, but Jian thinks he's joking. Jean Man then takes a photo of Jian's university card and tells her it is important for her to remember it. Turns out, that was the last thing he said to her. In the present, the taxi driver driving Jian says he was a school friend of Jean Man. She informs him that her uncle is dead, and he leaves his card with her when he drops her off. Jian then goes to the morgue to verify the identity of her uncle's body. He has a cut on his throat, and since no one was seen around his house, the case was concluded as a suicide. Jian wonders why he got his throat slit instead of his wrists, like in the usual suicide cases. When his body is being pushed back inside, Jian notices a tattoo on his leg that reads, Mirth Help. She then follows through with the funeral, when she reaches her uncle's house, she meets a young boy named Bei Jongmin. They used to know each other as kids. Jongmin helps her to make a picture of her uncle for the funeral which is cut out from the family picture. He is a computer science student and was working part-time for Jean Man for the IT stuffs and was also the last person speaking to him. He even offers to clean the bathroom where Jean Man was found. At Jean Man's funeral, the taxi driver arrives with more of Jean Man's old friends. Among the flower bouquets Jian received, one was from a person named Lee Yonghan. Jian then notices a pair of twin brothers arriving at the funeral. They are quiet and don't speak a word to anyone. Outside, a mysterious figure smokes a cigarette and says his goodbyes to Jean Man. Meanwhile, Zhang Min cleans up Jean Man's bathroom and finds a mobile phone hidden in one of the cupboards. At the funeral, Jean Man's old friends talk about how his business of selling hoses may not have been doing well. They discuss several rumors about Jean Man being a gangster or a spy. The taxi driver, now drunk, mad at how the other making bad rumor about Jean Man recalls that it was Jean Man who saved all of them when their fathers lost their money gambling. Jean Man was the one who saved him and his brother when their dad tried to kill them and drop a bag full of money at their house. The revelation shocks the others, who were not aware. Afterwards, everybody go to the cemetery and witness Jean Man's cremation. When Jian gets back at the house, Jian admits to Zhang Min that she's disgusted at the way her uncle died. She then enters the house and finds an old pair of clothes to wear. Haunted by memories of her uncle in the house, she finally breaks down. Zhang Min enters just as she's crying, and she asks him to stay a while. A little while later, she's asleep on his shoulder. When she wakes up, he gives her the phone he found. It's an old model, which surprises her. 
The phone then receives a text from someone who claims to have paid G-Man 70 million won. Another text shows her a bank balance of 18.7 billion won. Zhang Min shows Ji in the website that he revamped for Jean Man, who used to sell hoses. But they both know hoses couldn't make that much money, they realize the website is just a front for something else, and Zhang Min is able to uncover a website called Mirthhelp that sells weapons on the dark web. A message arrives on the website from the person who paid the money. When Jian replies that the shop is closed, the person realizes that Jean Man is dead and says that he is coming for Jian instead. Zhang Min quickly shuts the webpage down. Just as he suggests they should call the police, the bell rings. Jian picks up the intercom and speaks with a woman named So Minhai who claims to be Jin Man's Chinese tutor. The woman has weapons in her bag. Jian gets a text on the phone that tells her not to die at the hands of another since that person wants to kill her herself. Meanwhile, Minhai has made her way from the gate right to the front door and wants to get inside. At that moment, several drones are flying towards Jin Man's house direction. The scene shifts to another memory Jian had when she was seven years old. She and her family are having dinner with Jean Man, who has shown up after an eight-year disappearance. He introduces himself to Jian as her uncle, and the two smile at each other. In the present, we see Minhai driving up to Jean Man's house and sending drones towards it. Then, we see her pointing a gun at the house. The scene shifts to Jian's grandmother's funeral in the past when Jian was still very young. Jean Man thinks there's something fishy about her death, but Jian's father says she was unwell for a few years. Because Jean Man was absent for eight years, he didn't know about it, and Jian's dad is mad at his brother. Jian's mother doesn't want them to fight, so when she sees that Jian makes the rice dish fall, she asks Jean Man to take her and go home while they handle everything else. When the two leave, a man arrives at the funeral and talks to Jian's parents. He introduces himself as Jean Man's friend and pays his condolences. He turns out to be the sniper but was younger with different hairstyle. He claims to be an old friend of Jean Man's, but there is a sinister vibe about him. Back home, Jian can't sleep and asks Jean Man about death. He's watching a nature documentary where hyenas attack a lion and tells Jian that death isn't something to be afraid of. Only the weak bark while the strong stay quiet. Jean Man then gets a call on his burner phone. He answers and tells Jian that he has to come back to the funeral hall, and she'll be home alone. Jean Man's friend will come to get her, but she should only open the door if he is able to solve a riddle. She chooses a riddle about a horse, and he agrees, telling her he'll be right back. When he's gone, a man indeed comes to Jian's door and tries to open it. She asks him the riddle, but the man doesn't answer, he just opens the lock and enters. Before he can do anything, somebody pulls him out, and the door slams shut. Jian hears them fight, and after a bit, the other man comes in and shows her the correct answer to the riddle. He communicates by typing on his phone and tells her he is her uncle's friend. As more people come up the stairs, he tells Jian to stay in her room, in the midst of the fight, she cracks the door open and sees the sniper from before attacking her uncle's friend, cutting his hand off. The sniper and his colleague then enter her room and see it empty, he quickly finds out that Jian climbed out the window and is hanging from a pole on the outside of the building. When he reaches out for her, she lets herself fall down on some sofas thrown on the street. She runs away, and they chase after her. While running away, she gets hit by a van. However, this makes a crowd gather around her, and the killers have to give up. As she wakes up in a hospital, we hear two policemen discussing how her parents were murdered at the funeral, and she was left home alone and tried to get out of the house. They say she has an uncle, but he's been missing for years. At night, Jian dreams of a hyena walking in with a ripped off hand in its mouth. It then jumps on Jian's bed and snarls at her. She wakes up in the hospital bed, but one of the killers is right outside her room. He enters and realizes that Jian escaped again. She runs all the way to the morgue and crawls inside one of the morgue's drawers, hiding alongside the body, which turns out to be her own mother's. The killer is about to find her when somebody else opens the morgue's door. Jian hears gunfire, and then her uncle opens the drawer and picks her up. He tells her to close her eyes and then takes her home. One month later, Jian and her uncle drive towards the countryside. They reach the house that Jian Man has lived in until he dies. When Jian gets through the front door, she trips and falls. Jean Man tells her that he can't be a parent to her like her mother and father. She picks herself up and walks inside. While Jian is sleeping, Jean Man recalls how he was told by the doctor that she has aphasia with dissociative memory loss. He's clearly worried and blames himself, even slapping himself when alone. At school, a teacher tells Jean Man that Jian is being bullied for not being able to speak. Zhang Min tries to stop them, but Jian is too shy to befriend him. As a boy lies that Jian stabbed her mom because she cheated on him, she gets so mad and throws a chair at him. 
the teacher just says that she can't blend in with the others. One day, after school she walks home alone in the rain. G Men drives up to her on the road but she doesn't get in. He drives after her for a while and then drives away. After that she gets sick. Over time, she learns to be more independent and begins communicating with Jean Man through notes. At school, Jean Man tells the teacher she'll have to overcome her aphasia on her own, once, three boys lock Jian inside a basement storeroom at school. As night falls, she once again sees the hyena holding the man's cut-off hand. As she keeps hitting the locked door, she finally speaks and calls out her uncle's name. Jean Man arrives and opens the door, and Jian finally lets out what she was holding in, she screams. Asking him why he didn't come right back as he promised that day. Why was he late? He apologizes to her. At home, he cooks a pork belly barbecue, and they eat together. Back in the present, Jian stops Minhai from getting in. She tells Minhai that her uncle isn't coming home. Minhai pulls out a gun and speaks in Mandarin, saying that her uncle bragged about how Jian is pretty and smart and attends Gongju University. Jian realizes Minhai is lying and answers her in Mandarin saying everything she said is false, as Jean Man wouldn't say something like that. Minhai simply laughs and leaves. Jian gets another text message from someone who says he is going to kill her. Zhang Min then calls Jian inside and shows her that he's hacked into the website's operator's account. The website's rules say that authorized members need codes to buy products. There are four codes. Code red is for people who kill people. Purple is for spies. Yellow is for the cleanup crew, and green is the last one. Those who receive codes must never attack code green. If green is attacked, the others must risk their lives to protect green, who is the operator of mirth help. Jian and Jean Man are the green ones. When Jian is still shocked at all the information, an explosion shakes the house. They go out to see the house's outer wall all broken. Two drones attack the house's glass windows with a rain of bullets, but they don't break. Jian holds Zhang Min's hand and tries to get out of the house through the back door, but one drone is outside, blocking their route. The two jump back inside and close the metal door. Jian and Zhang Min realize the house is very well equipped, suddenly they notice all the drones stop shooting bullets, instead, they start shooting some small black devices into the glass windows. After a few seconds, they explode and make the glass break. Jian runs into her room while Zhang Min crawls into another one with a bulletproof metal closet. He decides to hide inside. One drone enters the house and follows them. It first shoots bullets at the closet, then the same black device, and Zhang Min is exposed. But Jian enters and shoots the drone down with a slingshot, then she destroys it with a chair. The scene then shifts to a group of men standing by a fire when a man named Mr. Kim arrives. He takes a knife and pries out a small chip from his arm, saying he doesn't need the codes anymore. The sniper arrives as well, and we know his name is Song Zhou. He tells the group that whoever kills or captures the niece will get a bonus. They all get into a van and head towards Jian's place. A Shop for Killers episode 3 starts with a flashback to when Jian was 17 years old. She comes back from school to find Thai construction workers working on the house. Jian thinks the house is totally fine, but her uncle and the workers insist it needs fixing. While they are at it, she asks them to install a window in her room. This means she and Jian Man need to stay elsewhere for two weeks. Jean Man's solution to this is to hike up Yuri San Mountain. They camp in a cave on the mountain, but Jean Man develops a fever, and Jian's phone has no signal. He's even hurt his leg, and Jian is frustrated. He pulls out a map and tells her to head towards a shelter to get an emergency phone. Giving her a slingshot to protect herself from boars. In case she finds herself in danger, he tells her to shout his name out loud three times, just like she did when she was stuck in the school basement as a child. When she leaves, Jean Man calls a man named Pazin and tells him Jian is on her way, saying they should let her decide for herself. Apparently, he was only pretending to be sick. He then goes deeper inside the cave and finds a rifle bag hidden. Meanwhile, Jian heads down the mountain and finally reaches the shelter. She opens the door to see dogs chomping on some meat, which soon turns into the cut-off hand she had nightmares about as a child. She steps back in fear when the dogs start to approach her. But Jian uses the slingshot to shoot the scary hyena. One of the dogs bites her hand, and Jian uses a rock to hit it and send it away. She then continues shooting the hyena with the slingshot until Jean Man arrives and saves her, his gunshot finally sends all of the dogs away. They drive away in the car. Jian is surprised that Jean Man is able to go downhill with a fever and a broken leg. He claims to have healed quickly. Jian is mad that he gave her the slingshot while having a gun for himself. Jean Man says that is because she doesn't know how to use it. 
Some time later, Jian practices using the slingshot in the field near their house. Jean Man gets a gun and teaches her how to use it, in the present, Jian destroys the drone that was attacking Zhang Min. They use the bulletproof cupboard door as a shield to go outside, in the living room, another drone is roaming. Jian uses the slingshot to shoot at it, but it doesn't do anything, and instead, the drone shoots a rain of bullets at them. Then it shoots the black devices and makes the door explode, throwing Jian and Zhang Min into the corner. The drone comes close to them, about to finish them both, just then, Min Hai, the woman who had tried to enter the house before, shoots a gun, sending a sonic blast that takes down all the drones. She enters the house, knocks Zhang Min off, and asks who he is. As he answers that he is Jian's friend, she injects him with something to make him pass out, Jian comes out with the slingshot and points it at her while Min Hai is holding a gun. Jian shoots her, and they start a fight. However, Jian is quickly defeated. Min Hai mentions something about Jin Man, making Jian confused. However, their conversation is interrupted by a bullet just missing Jian. The bullet is from Song Zhou, who is attacking Jian from his van on the nearby bridge. Min Hai kicks Jian back to avoid a bullet, then both of them go hide in the corners. In the house, Min Hai tells Jian that she's here to protect her. She knows that Jian was told to shout out Jin Man's name three times in case she was in danger. And in their forearm, there are codes implanted, and anyone who received a code has a duty to protect her. She also knows that Jian only used it three times in the last ten years, when a girl bullied her in middle school, in college when she was sexually harassed, and recently when a shop owner stiffed her. All three times, the perpetrator was faced with justice. By shouting Jin Man's name, Jian mobilized all the people who had received a code, and they have to come to help her. Meanwhile, the public address system continues telling villagers that the army is practicing in the field. It's actually a lie made by Song Zhou so no one will intervene and help Jian. The group of henchmen prepares for the attack. Then the team leader tells Song Zhou they are ready, meanwhile, Min Hai throws a smoke bomb on the floor. Clouding Song Zhou's vision. He calls someone, and then a drone is sent in to clear the smoke. Min Hai shoots it down but then gets shot by Song Zhou in the arm and drops her gun. Mr. Kim tells Song Zhou that dealing with Min Hai will cost more, and he agrees to pay. They seem to know her well and say she is code red and purple, this is when the first scene from the show happens. Jian uses the broom and mirror to find Song Zhou's blind spots. She jumps off the top of the fridge to get to the other side of the room. When she turns the sofa upside down, she finds a large rifle hidden underneath. She uses it to shoot and hits a window in Song Zhou's van, but she falls after the shot. Min Hai leverages the chaos to help her get up. And Zhang Min also wakes up now, at that moment, the house is surrounded by other men on foot. Min Hai quickly kills a guy who's approaching them. They begin to attack, and Min Hai tells Jian and Zhang Min to go to a hidden room in Jin Man's workroom while she covers them. They get to the storage shed, where Min Hai guides them to a locker with a keypad. The passcode turns out to be Jian's school ID number. Jian's face is scanned, and the entire section of the floor moves down like an elevator. It goes down to a massive storeroom, with shelves of guns. Just when they feel they are safe, a masked man comes out of the shadows and points a gun at them. He knows Jian and introduces himself as brother, meanwhile, Song Zhou's men enter the shed. Min Hai watches them from the top of a shelf. The scene shifts from the outside of the shed, and we hear a constant gunshot firing inside, a shop for killers episode 4 starts in a court somewhere other than Korea, where Jin Man is being questioned. A lawyer asks him if he saw the defendant killing people. The defendant looks at Jin Man and smirks. Jean Man remains quiet, and the lawyer rushes him to give an answer. The scene suddenly shifts to the phone call Jean Man received when he was at home with Jian after his mom's funeral. A man named Jun Chion tells him that, Bail, is still alive and after his family with Lee Songjo. Jean Man drives to the hospital and tries to call his brother and sister-in-law, but no one picks up the phone. He almost hits into a car parked in the middle of the road inside a tunnel. A woman runs to him and asks to borrow his phone. He doesn't say a thing and is about to drive away when a truck out of nowhere rams into his car from behind, and a group of people start shooting at him. It's clearly a setup trap, at present, Song Zhou's men are spread out in Jin Man's warehouse. Suddenly the lights go out. Min Hai starts taking them out one by one. She kills everyone until only Mr. Kim, the leader, remains. They have a hand-to-hand -hand fight, and even though Mr. Kim knocks her down to the floor, she eventually manages to kill him as well, in the storeroom below, a man named Brother keeps pointing a gun at Jian and Zhang Min. He then throws handcuffs at Jian and tells her to put them on Zhang Min. She pretends to do so but suddenly drops the handcuffs on the ground, and while he is surprised, she drags him around and holds him in a chokehold until he passes out. 
she removes his mask. A flashback shows a slightly younger Jian with a boy named Jun Myung. They were dating, and one day, Jun Myung tries to kiss her when he drops her off. Before he can, Jin Man and Pazin interrupt them and demand the boy show his license for driving a bike. He gets sent away by Pazin, and Jian is pissed. Later, we see Jian working at a fast food restaurant while a group of students from her school sit nearby. The boys talk trash about her and her uncle when one girl in the group named Min Suk doesn't support what they say. Jun Myung enters but leaves once he sees Jian there, upsetting her. She comes home and criticizes Jin Man for behaving oddly with the people around her, like her friend Min Suk and her tutor. Jin Man calmly explains that he had valid reasons for each of those times. Min Suk stole his watch that day, but she then apologized and returned it. The tutor was a pervert who got arrested for molestation. And for Jun Myung, it was because he drove a motorcycle without a license and helmet, and he was underage and smoked. Still, Jian feels like Jin Man is locking her up. She says she works so many jobs to move out. Jin Man says he will agree to let her move out if she can hit him in the face once. She thinks he's not being serious and asks if her parents really died an ordinary death. He avoids answering and tells her to hit him if she wants to move out. She tries but easily fails and hurts her feet instead. At some point later, Pazin teaches Jian to operate the forklift in the warehouse. She uses the opportunity to try and hit Jean Man but fails again. Pazin ends up stopping her from going after her uncle, and at Jean Man's orders, he makes her pass out. Jian is furious when she wakes up and sees the two grown men blaming each other. Afterward, Jian goes to Pazin's Thai restaurant and asks him to teach her how to fight. He agrees to teach her Muay Thai for 50,000 won a week. He takes her to the backyard, and they start training. Jian quickly gets better day after day and tries to improve her strength whenever she can. However, she still can't hit Jin Man. One night, Jian comes across a group of boys cornering her old friend from school, Min Suk. Min Suk runs away, and Jian becomes their next target. She uses her new skills to knock down two boys, and Jin Man appears to take care of the third. The police, called by Min Suk, come soon after. On the way back, Jin Man drops her off at Pazin's restaurant. But Jian finds the police there as well as a group of people from whom Pazin had borrowed money. He seems to have run away but leaves Jian a gift. At present, Jian and Zhang Min find a setup of security cameras in the storeroom. There are cameras in multiple places, including her school and the bathroom. Jian is shocked and mad and asks brother how long he's been watching her. He says there's no time for this now, and they need to urgently go help Min Hai since more bad guys will be there soon. When Zhang Min puts the light on, brother gets scared as the brightness hurts him, a flashback shows him staying in a dark room when a man approaches him with an umbrella. Jian gives him a hooded jacket and demands an explanation. He starts to talk, but Zhang Min jumps in and stuff cloth into his mouth, telling Jian he's only trying to evoke her pity. When Zhang Min goes around to check, brother runs off, saying to Jian not to trust Zhang Min. She chases after him but ends up falling down a chute into a small room. Brother closes the trapdoor above her. Down there, Jian finds another setup of computers. Upstairs, brother makes the lights go out and sneaks up on Zhang Min, tasering him, and then locking him up to a wall. He then speaks to Jian directly through the cameras and tells her to open a drawer to her right. Inside is a guide for transferring ownership of mirth help from Jean Man to Jian. She consents to the transfer and, as the new owner, orders brother to get her out. But once she's out, she takes his gun and orders him to release Zhang Min. Brother reveals that Zhang Min is the reason Jean Man died. Jian makes brother release Zhang Min anyway, but brother still puts a catch pole on his neck. Jian holds a gun pointing at both and agrees to hear brother's side of the story. He says her uncle would never kill himself and tells her to check the video file. She moves to open a video file, but Zhang Min dissuades her. In an attempt to convince Jian, Zhang Min says he was the one who told Jin Man she was in the school basement all those years ago. A flashback shows a 13 year old Jian holding a small kitten. Jin Man agrees to let her keep it but warns her that she must take responsibility if he dies as well. Jian changes her mind as she sees Min Hai in one of the security cameras and tells brother to go give her guns and medicines. Before leaving, he gives Jian a pair of sunglasses as a gift, he reaches the warehouse, and Min Hai recognizes him. Downstairs, Jian gives Zhang Min a hand to pull him up, he gives Jian a hug and thanks her. But it's really an excuse for him to inject her with a sedative. He admits he was also the one who locked her in the school basement back then. He then gets the gun on the floor and sits in front of the monitor system. Before she passes out, Jian looks at the sunglasses. Through the lens, Jian sees a red dot on Zhang Min's chest. A flashback shows young Jian crying over the kitten, who died. 
At present, she asks Zhang Min who he is, and he smiles. Meanwhile, Song Zhou and his team receive a fancy new gun that can be remotely operated. At the end of the last episode, Deng Min revealed his true identity by declaring himself the one who had deliberately locked the warehouse door to trap Jian inside. After being discharged from the military and struggling to find a job, he stumbled upon an advertisement for a worker needed by Uncle Jean Man. The episode begins with a flashback in which Zhang Min asks Jean Man if he can work part time for him. He also introduces himself as Jian's high school friend. In the present, Zhang Min is on a call, telling someone that he will soon hand over the shopping store, Mirth Help, to them. However, what the boss really wants is Jian's life. Jian is tied to a chair but is regaining consciousness and overhears the conversation. Zhang Min hesitates for a moment but then grabs a gun and points it at Jian. Jian asks him why he locked her in the basement back then, and he chuckles. He says he was curious to see if she was really mute or not and adds that it was thanks to him that, due to this extreme situation, she spoke again, Jian is horrified by this revelation and screams out loud. Zhang Min gets excited to see her reaction and begins bragging about the real reason behind all of his actions, revealing that he now works for an organization named Babylon, in a flashback, Zhang Min talks to his friend about killers on the deep web. They both return home to find strange men waiting for them. These men are henchmen trying to find the hackers who had breached Mirth Help security. They give Zhang Min and his friend a deadline to retrieve Mirth Help's IP address. Zhang Min succeeds, but the henchmen kill his friend. Zhang Min, however, feels no sadness and simply asks them to dispose of the body. In the present Zhang Min proudly tells Jian that from that he know he is not just ordinary like other. Jian asks him about how did he know her uncle, in a flashback, we see Zhang Min working with Jin Man. He constantly mentions Jian to Jin Man, who eventually believes Zhang Min to be Jian's childhood friend. One day, Jin Man asks for Zhang Min's help with his computer, and Zhang Min plants a spy software on his PC. At night when Jin Man logged into Mirth Help Zhang Min was able to see all of the credential and important information of the website. He successfully has access to Mirth Help and finished the task with the Bale's men, just when one of the Bale men about to kill him as long as he finished the task. Zhang set up Mirth Help to reset and they won't be able to log in anymore, and they will need him in order to have access to Mirth Help. In the present, Zhang Min shows Jian the video record how her uncle died. Zhang Min is tied up and gets beaten by Jin Man. Zhang Min uses a deep fake audio and tricks Jin Man into believing Jian is in danger. He is tied up because Zhang Min was caught on camera, and Zhang Min reveals he is working with Babylon. Jin Man releases Zhang Min and asks him to inform Babylon to keep their promise. Jin Man walks inside the washroom and the camera turns off, disappointing Zhang Min and when Zhang Min enters a few minutes later, Jin Man is seen dead in the bathtub full of blood. He has killed himself with a knife. Zhang Min vomits after seeing that scene but then laughing hysterically. Back in the present, Jian cries upon seeing her uncle die in such a manner, screaming in despair. Zhang Min mockingly comments that he thought Jin Man was cooler than that but he fell for a simple trick. Jian calls Zhang Min a coward and accuses him of being merely a pawn of Babylon. Angered, Zhang Min points a gun at her. Jian kicks his leg, causing him to slip, and she knocks him down with her leg. Even after losing one of her teeth while biting him, she manages to escape briefly and uses the materials around her to trap Zhang Min and hang him up, she beats him severely. At that moment, Babylon instructs Song Zhou to capture Jian alive. More men arrive to catch Jian, aided by an advanced robot designed to assist in their mission. Meanwhile, Brother break a wall to retrieve weapons stored behind it and uses his computer to activate the house's metal shutter system. As the robot enters the house, Min Hai attempts to shoot it but keeps missing. Just as the robot is about to leap at them, the shutter in the living room closes in time, the robot keeps the main door's shutter open, allowing the men to enter, only for them to be trapped inside. However, with the robot's assistance, Song Zhou and the tech team can still see Min Hai and brother hiding behind the corridor. In the basement, Jian discovers a transfer document from Uncle Jean Man. It contains an apology for placing her in such a difficult situation, but also grants her the right to choose her own path. The first option allows Jian to escape through the back door of the warehouse, where a phone connects her directly to someone who can help her start a new life with a new identity and sufficient funds. The second option is for Jian to stay, join the fight, and protect those willing to sacrifice their lives for her. She chooses the latter, meanwhile, Babylon's men manage to break through the shutter. At that moment, Min Hai throws a light bomb and leaps out to confront them, engaging in a fierce battle. She manages to eliminate most of them but sustains injuries in the process. Just as one man is about to kill her and brother, Jian intervenes. She throws grenades at them and retreats into the bathroom to tend to Min Hai's wounds. Somehow, one man survives and follows them into the bathroom, shooting at Min Hai. Brother attempts to intervene but is quickly overpowered. Jian fights for her life but she is clearly outmatched. Just as the man is about to slit her face, Pazan appears and attacks him from behind. They embrace, and Pazan urgently tells Jian that there is no time. Pazan then tells her that Bale is coming and he is the one who killed her parents. In the epilogue, we see Bale and his men watching everything happening inside Jean Man's house through the drones. 
When Jian attacks a drone with a slingshot, he asks the twin brother to handle the situation. Episode 6 of Shop for Killers begins with a flashback to 14 years ago. Jean Man and a group of men, all mercenaries, are on a mission to escort a Korean businessman back to Korea from a foreign country. Jean Man, serving as the captain, is in the car with Pazin and another man. However, they are caught under heavy gunfire from their opponents. Amidst the gunfire, one man suggests they need to escape or they will all die. Jean Man insists they must rescue the client, valuing their lives more highly. Over the radio, someone reports that Bale has left his position and is moving toward the center of the opposition, elsewhere, Song Jo and his colleague are fighting together. Just as a man is about to stab Song Jo in the face. His colleague intervenes, defeating the attacker and saving Song Jo's life. When they think the danger has passed, a group of gunmen appears, aiming at them. Just in time, Bale arrives, makes sure all the gunmen are dead, they then position themselves as snipers on a rooftop, with Bale targeting all the men surrounding Jean Man's car. Thanks to Bale's intervention, Jean Man and his team prevail, later, someone informs Jean Man that there has been no word from Bale and Song Jo for an hour, prompting Jean Man to search for them, on the rooftop, Song Jo and his colleague are taking a break. The rookie then descends to search for Bale, only to discover Bale has killed innocent civilians. Song Jo arrives but shows no surprise at the scene. When the new recruit protests, Song Jo kills him, despite that he having saved Song Jo earlier, Jean Man discovers the scene, and Song Jo falsely claims the rookie died trying to protect civilians. Then, a young boy appears, armed with a gun. Jean Man urges him to drop the weapon, but Bale swiftly kills the boy in front of Jean Man. The narrative shifts to a courtroom where Bale faces charges for the murder of nine civilians. Song Jo and Jean Man serve as witnesses, with Song Jo falsely testifying that Bale killed only rebels. When Jean Man takes the stand as a witness, the scene transitions to a flashback in a locker room, where Song Jo defends Bale to Jean Man. Song Jo argues that Bale's actions, even killing the child, were for their safety. Jean Man, however, knows this to be false, noting the gun had no magazine. Song Jo then points out that Jean Man always prioritizes the mission, whereas Bale prioritizes their lives. Hazen and the twin mercenaries are also present in the room, Jean Man also speaks to Yong Han. Their boss, about his suspicions regarding Bale. Yong Han observes that Bale has no soul in his eyes and describes him as a killing machine, advising Jean Man to let this go. He further notes that Jean Man and Bale are not so different. In the courtroom, Jean Man testifies that he did not see Bale commit murder, leading to Bale being found not guilty. Returning to the conversation with Yong Han, he tells Jean Man that he is the only one who can control Bale. Jean Man agrees but requests that Yong Han not include Bale in any of his operations, the team is now on an airplane, but the atmosphere is tense. Song Jo taunts Jean Man for being too adherent to the rules, leading to a confrontation with Pazin. Who stands up for Jean Man? The situation escalates until the twins stand up for Song Jo, but they all back down when Bale intervenes. The scene ends with Jean Man and Bale simply staring at each other in the darkness. Jean Man's next task is to capture a big drug dealer. Because the operation is big, Yong Han says he still needs Bale to work with him. Yong Han promises that this will be the last operation Jean Man has to work with Bale. He shows Jean Man a photograph of a man, instructing him to capture the target alive. As the captain, Jean Man issues orders to Bale before their departure, though Bale senses Jean Man's reluctance to have him there. During the mission, Bale and a colleague come across two unarmed men. Jean Man's orders were to hand them over to the police, but Bale throws them a knife, thereby officially making them armed, and then kills them. Meanwhile, Jean Man and Pazin chase and catch a man named Tao, their target. When they get to his room, Jean Man sees a pile of cash and a passport, along with a pair of women's heels and lingerie on the floor. Back at the other building, the men find some money and share it with others. Song Jo searches for loot and comes across four civilian women locked up in a room. They appear to be victims of trafficking and beg for help. Bale tells them not to worry but then throws a grenade into the room. Even Song Jo is shocked by what he's done, and the grenade kills them all. The sound brings Jean Man over, who is livid when he finds out what happened. Song Jo still lies that this is how they found the girls, but Jean Man doesn't buy it at all this time. Jean Man looks at Bale with anger. Guns are pulled, and Bale tells Jean Man to shoot him if he wants. But Song Jo convinces everyone to calm down, Jean Man orders them to blast the place before heading back home, but he plans to report Bale's actions to the company. While setting up explosives, Jean Man comes across another woman, a victim of trafficking. It turns out to be none other than Min Hai. She tells him to kill her quickly if he has to, but Jean Man quietly gives her his jacket to cover up and tells her to keep quiet. Outside the building, everyone piles into cars, and Jean Man tells them to go ahead. After making sure everyone leaves, he goes back to get Min Hai, who is hiding in a closet. They try to run out before the bomb explodes, but unfortunately, Bale returns. Jean Man tells Min Hai to run, and he and Bale face off. A brutal fight ensues, and just as Bale is about to strike Jean Man, Min Hai shoots Bale in the face, causing him to fall. 
Jean Man takes advantage of the situation and stabs him, Bale warns Jean Man that if he doesn't kill him now, Bale will kill everyone Jean Man knows and cares about. Jean Man attempts to shoot him, but the gun is out of bullets, and the explosives reach the end of their countdown. Forcing Jean Man and Min Hai to leave. He assumes Bale is dead anyway. Once out of the building, Min Hai and Jean Man watch as it is completely destroyed, back home, Jean Man lies, saying that rebels cornered him and Bale, which led to Bale's death. He then quits his job, telling Yong Han he needs a break. After Jean Man leaves, Yong Han makes a call, instructing someone to keep a close watch on Jean Man, while clearing out Bale's locker, Song Jo finds a luxury wristwatch and decides to keep it for himself. He and the team burn the rest of Bale's belongings along with some money as a tribute. Later, Jean Man is waiting at a bus station when he notices a man observing him from a distance. Another man appears, smiling at Jean Man, but Jean Man signals that he's being watched. Understanding the situation, the man continues walking past Jean Man but discreetly drops a set of car keys next to him, Jean Man then calls his older brother after eight years. His brother, furious, screams at him for disappearing for so long without any news. Eventually, Jean Man arrives at his brother's house and reunites with his family. It's an emotional moment, especially since it's the first time he meets his niece, Song Jian. Elsewhere, Song Zhou is practicing his shooting skills when a man approaches him from behind. It's none other than Bale, now having new burn scars on his face. A group of three Japanese men receives a large box from Jean Man. They take a few guns from the box, then close it, leaving the other pretty package untouched. Later, a woman hides in a rice container until a man opens it in his warehouse and panics, pointing a gun at her. She gestures for him to stop and hands him a phone with a message written on it, take care of her for a little while. This woman is none other than Min Hai, meanwhile, Jean Man and his family go to take a family picture, with everyone looking very happy. Unfortunately, Jean Man's mother quickly falls ill and has to stay in the hospital. Jean Man sits beside her bed, and she asks him to take care of the family, especially Jian. At the hardware store, Jean Man's friend Honda receives a box delivered to his door and starts to unbox it. Min Hai, now staying there, hasn't yet spoken Korean and communicates only in Chinese. Honda notices someone suspicious outside and goes to check, discovering it's Jean Man. Jean Man emerges from the shadows and greets him with sign language, and they happily reunite. Min Hai is shocked to see her savior and runs to hug him. At night, while Min Hai sleeps, Jean Man and Honda talk about Bale. Honda is mute and use sign language, he's convinced Bale is dead and asks Jean Man to come work for him, mentioning he has even started an online shopping mall to expand the business. Jean Man is skeptical. Knowing Honda's lack of computer skills, but Honda reveals his little brother is a computer genius who will manage it. Jean Man is also surprised to learn from Honda that Min Hai assembled a gun on her own, the scene shifts to an abandoned building where Bale, Song Jo, and others discuss taking revenge on Jean Man. Jun Chiol, uncomfortable with targeting Jean Man's family, decides to leave. This sparks an argument with Song Jo, who then mentions his family. At the hospital, Bale smothers Jean Man's mother with his hand, leading to her death. At her funeral, Jean Man suggests an autopsy because he finds his mother's death suspicious, but his brother dismisses the idea. After he leaves with Jian, Song Jo appears. A group of men in a car checks the security cameras as he goes to the funeral house and deletes Song Jo from the footage. He then meets with Jean Man's brother and sister-in-law and leads them to the rooftop under the pretense of retrieving a wreath mistakenly delivered there by the funeral service, just then, Bale appears, staring at them. Song Jo and other men brutally kill Jian's poor parents. On the way home, Jean Man texts Honda about his suspicions, saying that a lot of things don't make sense and asks him to check the hospital security footage. Honda, just returning home, hands his brother a bag of food. At home, Jun Chiol calls Jean Man and informs him that Bale is still alive and is arriving at the funeral home. Jean Man leaves Jin at home and goes there, texting Honda to help him protect Jin. Honda's brother complains about him going out, but Honda promises to return before dinner, but we know he won't be able to. Honda arrives in time to save Jian from the first attacker but ultimately loses the fight when Song Jo and another man attack him. After he's defeated, Song Jo cuts his hand off to take the shiny gold knuckle band he's wearing. Meanwhile, Jean Man falls into a trap in a tunnel, set by none other than Jun Chiol, who was never really on his side. A barrage of bullets flies at him, but Jean Man survives thanks to a bulletproof shield in the car. He begins shooting at them with his machine gun, managing to kill all the men except Jun Chiol. When Jun Chiol is still confused, Jean Man approaches him from behind and disarms him. Angry at his betrayal, Jean Man confronts him. Just then, the woman killer approaches, and Jean Man uses Jun Chiol as a human shield, and he runs away. Meanwhile, at home, Jin escapes and runs into a van. At Honda's hardware store, Min Hai sees two men entering the house from the security camera. They are amazed by the amount of weapons inside the store. However, these men are bales and are here to get her. 
she uses a bucket of acid to trap them and then shoot them down. She then packs a bag and presses a button that sets the whole place on fire before leaving, meanwhile, Pazin is talking on the phone with someone in Thai about medical bills. He arrives home to find his door unlocked and discovers Jean Man fainted on the floor from his injuries. Pazin saves him, and when Jean Man wakes up, Pazin expresses his desire to stay out of the conflict. Asking Jean Man to leave. Jean Man agrees and asks for a gun. Pazin questions why Jean Man tried to kill Bale in the first place. Jean Man explains it was to set things right since he was the one who liked to keep Bale out of jail, allowing him to continue killing innocent people. Pazin gives him a gun with 13 rounds, after learning his team failed to capture Jean Man and Min Hai, Bale is furious and beats one of his team members. Young Han shows up, telling him to stop and that the company will handle the rest. They will punish Jean Man for lying to them and killing several of their men. Bale asks about their plan, at the hospital, Jian flees from her attacker and hides in the morgue. Jean Man confronts the men waiting outside in their car before entering the hospital. Meanwhile, Bale, while driving, tells Songjo over the phone that he must be the one to finish Jean Man. Jean Man kills the attacker and saves Jian. In the passageway, he comes face to face with Bale. Fortunately, a funeral procession passes between them, allowing Jean Man and Jian to escape. Young Han returns home to discover Jean Man there, playing with his grandson and pretending to be a guest. Privately, Jean Man tells Yong Han that he could have harmed his family but chose not to. He urges Yong Han to end the conflict. Yong Han then calls Bale, asking him to stop his pursuit, but Bale just laughs and hangs up. While Jian is asleep, Jean Man discusses with Pazin the need for a long term protection plan. Jean Man then shows him the field and the house, revealing plans to build an underground mall. He also comes to pick up Honda's brother, who has been living in misery since Honda's death, to join them. Pazin, following Minhai after she leaves the restaurant where she works, is confronted by her pointing a gun at him, however, he quickly disarms her and inquires if the gun once belonged to Honda, after Jian moves in, Honda's brother, works for Jean Man at the warehouse, while Pazin trains Minhai, Jean Man is continually haunted by nightmares of Bale, fearing that Bale will once again hurting his family. To prepare for that, Jean Man begins teaching Jian how to assemble and use a gun. As night falls, Song Jo talks to the twins before they enter Jian's house. He warns them that all the men who came before them are dead, and the house is built like a fortress. Inside the house, Pazin extracts a bullet from Minhai. In the bathroom, behind the washing machine, a secret passage is revealed, leading to a tunnel. Down there, Brother sniffs the wall and finally smells gunpowder with an electric wire hidden in the wall. He is surprised and offended that Jean Man hasn't told him anything about it in the 14 years he's been living there. In the basement, Zhang Min is still hanging upside down. He moves his body aggressively and finally manages to make the rope snap. After that, he goes to the elevator and tries to get back upstairs but is unable to. He returns to the computer system and decides to mess things up out of bitterness. Minhai and Jian are talking when Pazin says they need to go down to the shopping mall. Brother comes in worriedly and claims they can't do that. He struggles to explain that Jean Man has set booby-trapped explosives in the mall. It needs to have a manager, which is Jean Man, himself, and now also Jin, inside at all times, and since Jian left it unattended, the restart protocol will start, and all operations in the shopping mall will shut down within 24 hours. They have 20 hours and 30 minutes left for the restart to complete. Upon checking the system, Brother also realizes that someone is accessing the server. Jian now has some time to talk to Pazin and asks if he is a killer as well. He tries to beat around the bush, but Jian calls him out and makes Pazin promise to explain everything later, to which he agrees. Meanwhile, Min Hai comes to brother and gives him a snack, repeating something Honda always said to her when he was alive, no matter what you do, you'll be more at ease on a full stomach. At that moment, brother realizes that Zhang Min is doing something at the mall. While everyone is worried and scolding Jian for trusting him in the beginning, the robot dog starts moving and emits a high-pitched noise that hurts all of them. Pazin shoots at it, but the fire doesn't do anything to this metal robot, the noise even breaks the glasses in the house and makes brother pass out. Pazin tells Jian to hide in the passageway. Jian struggles to leave and tries to drag the unconscious brother with her. Minhai is about to smash the dog with a gun when a car hits the wall right into the house. They are none other than the twins and Songjo. The twins stay to fight Minhai and Pazin while Songjo goes after Jian. He first struggles to get out of the car as he parked right next to a wall. The twin shoots Minhai first, and she collapses instantly after so many injuries. Pazin looks at his former colleagues and promises to bring them to hell with him. They seem to enjoy it and decide to put away their guns and engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat instead. Meanwhile, Jian is in her room when Songjo finally gets out of the car and looks for her. 
As he is about to find her under the bed, she jumps in and intends to stab him with a knife. But he quickly defeats her. Songjo creepily reminds Jian about their first encounter. At that moment, brother suddenly appears from behind and tries to hit him with a door knocker. Of course, he is no match for Songjo, but he tries to hold him and tells Jian to run. She does as he says and sees Pazin and Minhai also fighting for their lives outside. And she just stands there and screams. One of the twins tries to get her, but Minhai stops him, and Pazin manages to kill another one and yells at Jian to get out of there. The remaining twin brother gets crazy and chases after Pazin with a gun. Inside, Songjo gets brother off of him and shoots him several times. Jian runs from the house to the warehouse, with Songjo chasing after her. She is confused and doesn't know what to do next but then sees a gun, picks it up, and tells herself to pull it together. Songjo comes inside and is about to take the gold ring off Mr. Kim's corpse's fingers then the lights turn on. Jian comes out, pointing a gun at him, asking if he's the one who killed her parents. A noise distracts them both, and Songjo runs to hide. Zhang Min comes out from the mall and rails against Babylon and Jian then his gun runs out of ammo. Songjo comes up, takes him down with an axe, and then realizes they were probably on the same side. Jian runs into the mall with Songjo following her. She hides, while Songjo looks for her. Songjo sets up a laser trap and wears glasses that let him see the lasers. Jian accidentally triggers a laser, causing an explosion. She dodges Songjo's shot, tries to shoot back, but her gun is empty. However the explosion damages a gun, and Jian finds some bullets on the floor, upstairs, the remaining twin brother finds a secret passage and goes into the tunnel. He kicks open a door, and it explodes in his face. Meanwhile Jian manages to hide in the monitor room, crying and bandaging her arm. Upstairs, brother wakes up unharmed thanks to his bulletproof vest. Songjo waits for Jian to fall into another trap but sees his team slogan on the wall, we are all going to hell but not today. He hears a noise, and Jian drives a forklift at him. He dodges it but fall into his own trap, then, falls into gasoline Jian had spread, and she sets it on fire with a gunshot. The fire is put out by sprinklers. Songjo tries to attack her, but Jian shoots him right in the forehead. At that moment brother goes down and finds her. She asks about the others and he tells her their friends are okay, then brother resets the mall's security. They see on a satellite camera more people coming. They are killers who once working for Jean Man, outside, more armed men arrive. Brother realizes they are all wanted. With a big bounty placed by Babylon. He asks her what to do, and after a moment of thought, she asks him to unlock the weapon shelf and take out an axe, upstairs, Pazin and Minhai are in the bedroom. He tells her that more men are coming, which means Jian is still fighting. They're still ready to defend them all. At the same time, a group of henchmen enters the warehouse. Brother steps out from the mall, wearing an explosive vest and holding a bag. He opens it to show Songjo's cut off head. Over the intercom, Jian offers them a deal, leave now, and she'll pay them the Babylon bounty, split evenly without any deductions, and offer future discounts better than what Jean Man her uncle did. If they refuse, she threatens to detonate the explosives. One by one, the men lay down their weapons and accept her offer, quickly leaving the place, returning to the bedroom from the living room, Pazin finds Minhai unresponsive. Brother is devastated when he's back to the mall and asks to never have to do something like this again. Jian pick up a gun on the floor, goes up searches her damaged home for Pazin and Minhai but finds no sign of them. Overwhelmed, she break down in despair, her grief is interrupted by the sight of another bus heading towards the house. This time, she confronts it up front the driver, who had driven them to Jean Man's funeral that morning, announces they've come to clean up, as a large group starts cleaning the house and warehouse, a taxi arrives, causing everyone to aim their guns. But it's Jean Man's old friends from the funeral, revealing an injured Jean Man, but very much alive, getting out of the car. He smiled with Jian, who was in shock. That is the end of a shop for Killers Season 1. Let me know what you think in the comment. Thank you for watching, subscribe and like for more videos like this.